Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and we're back here once again with some more career mode action season 2 officially beginning today because later in the video we'll be heading out on track for qualifying to kick it all off but of course the last video in this series at the start of season 2 was of course the pre-season video where we went over driver transfers new livery team badge team colors you get the point all that sort of stuff and the calendar we are gonna have a quick run through of that before the rest of today's video when we get into some quality bit of a refresher if you guys don't want to go and watch that you'd rather just get a quick run through but plenty of changes i think where we'll start is over in the uga corporate over here as you can see our teammate for season two is the young japanese driver yuki sonoda you can see we've upped into 89 rating 88 focus 90 pace 92 awareness 92 racecraft not as great on the experience i have to say but he certainly is looking really really solid there he should be a competitive teammate if you compare him to let's say Pierre Gasly, who we, we actually went for Charles Leclerc, rejected. Lando Norris, we were rejected. Verstappen also rejected us. So did Pierre Gasly. But if you look at Pierre Gasly, he's 89 rated. 91 pace. So Sonoda's very much up around his ratings and has more focus. You know, So we've really upped Sonoda. And he should be a really solid teammate for Season 2. But as you can see... We are here in the driver market. The change, of course, being us signing Sonoda from Alpha Tauri. And as a result, they went for Aston Martin's Lance Stroll. Yes, he's 83 rated. Incredible 92 racecraft there. You look at um, Gasly. 92 racecraft. So a really nice 92 racecraft there. Awareness 81, not too bad. His pace is quite low, though, compared to Pierre. Pierre 91. 82 pace for stroll that's going to massively affect him in quality and of course how quick he is during the race you look at that though and that he's going to struggle a bit this season with that low focus 69 it's nearly at 70 it has recovered but he'll certainly be towards the bottom of this midfield fight because alpha towery are quite close to us still in the r and d in fact they're slightly ahead He's not going to be that strong of a force with 69 focus. And as a result, of course, with Lance Stroll going to Alpha Tauri. And then, of course, that's because we took Yugi Sonoda. The lovely Aston Martin had a seat to fill. So they took my teammate Robert Schwartzman. Interesting decision there. Probably the right one to do. I mean, they could have, let's say, gone and dipped into a team like Williams or Haas. That was struggling a bit last season. And maybe dipped into Mick Schumacher there. What about him? You certainly look at the price of the two. I mean, Mick Schumacher, 7.5 million. My teammate would have been around that. So a little bit of an interest. Of course, wasn't the buyout there, so it would have been a bit cheaper. But interesting to see that they didn't opt maybe for Mick Schumacher. Got better stats. But they've gone for my teammate. He was solid last season. But again, he probably won't be able to deliver that sort of results that they need to be able to compete with us in Alpha Towery. Of course, my teammate, you know, look at his stats. Nice. Uh, 96. 76 pace isn't that great. Neither 70 awareness, 69 racecraft, 35 experience, and 76 focus. It's mediocre, but it certainly ain't going to be challenging anyone anytime soon. I mean, Nicholas Latifi and Nic Nicholas Latifi's got better stats. Mazapin has lower stats. He's the only driver with lower stats, and that's by two. So they could struggle a bit this season. And AlphaTauri choosing Lance Stroll, they could struggle too. The door is open. For ourselves. In terms of focus, Hamilton 95, Bottas 98. He's set to try and retain his title. Verstappen, one of the lower ones near the top, with 88. Leclerc has 96 after last season. He's buzzing to get going. Danny Rick, a little bit lower to 87. Lando Norris, however, 95, looking for a bit of redemption. A good finish to last season after a poor start. Perez 94, he's looking solid, the Mexican. Off the back of a P2 at his home race in the last season. Signs a little bit lower. 89, still not too bad. Gasly, though, 
in the last season he was getting in the mix with the McLarens and the Ferraris despite them having faster cars can't see that happening as much this season with just 82 focus Alonso though is looking like a force 91 for him along with Esteban Ocon George Russell also with 91 looking for some better results for Williams Lance Stroll an outlier there just 69 he'll struggle Giovinazzi 84 a bit lower than most but not too bad Neither for Nicholas Latifi with 88. Yuki, of course, has 88. Mick Schumacher, very solid, 91. Schwartzman, pretty low at 76. Might struggle a bit. Mazepin with 88. So that is the rundown of the driver transfers. Of course, you can see we've got 27.33 million left. And we have upgraded in an upgrade for the R&D generation in the chassis department. That's looking a bit different at the moment. We also need to focus on the aero side of things a little bit more whether we need a spec upgrade in that or not soon we'll have to wait and see but we're really focusing on personnel to boost our teammate we can't just do that we have to look at the other departments too though and hmm, we could upgrade powertrain to spec 2 I think we're going to go with um, the yeah we're going to go with the R&D generation there and I'm tempted to go with the same for aero. But maybe in fabrication to three, because we've got a lot of work to do on that. I think we're going to do the same. We're shelling out big figures here. We're not going to be in the durability. You guys will see that in the durability department, we're one of the weakest. But the durability there, we are the weakest, of course. It's not something pivotal, really, for us at the moment. We're just going to roll with it and hope the car does all right this season. It's very close in that department. We should be all right. Powertrain, though, we do need to get some upgrades in. We are quite high up. That's an area where we want to get upgrades in. So do we want to get upgrades in the chassis department, another pivotal department. Um, but you can see we're actually not too bad in the chassis. The main focus, though, being the aero. We're still near the bottom. We want to get back up to the likes of Alpine and Alpha Tower around there. And that's going to get us into a competitive position. But you can, of course, see we've got the R&D graph here. It makes it easier to visualize Red Bull and Mercedes have closed up. Mercedes have jumped all the way up there. Red Bull stalled a little bit, which does, of course, mean that we've got a very close battle. It's going to come down to the drivers, not the cars this season. Ferrari have dropped back to McLaren. Been hit a bit by the regulation changes. They sit just in front of McLaren. Again, that will come down to driver performances for P3 in terms of the teams. Then Alpha Tauri slightly ahead of ourselves and we're side by side with Aston Martin, who have leaped back up there. So that's looking interesting, but the three of us extremely close. Again, coming down to performance. Then a little bit further back, Alfa Romeo, a chunk ahead of Alpine. They're looking pretty comfortable this season, Alfa Romeo ahead of Alpine, trying to get back up to the front runners but they've been hit a little bit after last season but Alfa Romeo remained for Alpine and then Williams disappointing last season in terms of the car this season massive inroads back to the lower midfield there pretty close to Alpine Haas have just totally dropped off to the back as you can see the calendar remains the same for the first eight rounds we go Bahrain Imola Spain France Austria Great Britain Hungary, Belgium, then round number nine will be Mexico instead of Cota. Round number ten is Saudi Arabia. We're going to go to Jeddah to finish off the season. We've taken out Cota and replaced it with Jeddah. That is all of that to look at for the moment. These upgrades in the departments will, of course, be in for Imola. Hopefully, we might be able to sneak in a couple of R&D upgrades. Yes, two major upgrades from aero and chassis to boosters for Italy. But it is going to be the lovely Bahrain International Circuit here. And it certainly should be a good quality and a good race. It's all going to be sort of an in-job interview for Yuki Sonoda to see if he can get those results that we need him to get. Hopefully, though, we're on our way to a decent season. That's at least is the plan, but plenty of high caliber drivers with high focus here to be able to compete this season because he's a lot of money recently but 
there's a lot of high caliber drivers high focus high rated drivers who really really will be competing this season i'm very excited to get this one underway at bahrain we've looked at the graphs so no need to look at that we're going to get into some qualifying before we do if you're enjoying these videos hit the like button and subscribe to the channel but finally some action in season two Ah, the fresh smell of Q1 hair here at Bahrain for the first quality session of the season. We're here at the Bahrain International Circuit. We're sat in the garage. Kimi Raikkonen is going to be the first man to step foot onto the track in season two. Still with us. Quite surprising that he hasn't retired yet. Maybe this will be his last season for the Finn. He's the first one to get out onto his outlap here at Bahrain in Q1. One thing to bear in mind here at Bahrain is definitely the tail. We're very high, which does of course mean that if you're going out on your softs, you aren't going to be able to do too many laps, two laps, and then your tires have really, really dropped off. It also plays a factor in Q2, because you don't want to get through on the softs, you want to get through on the mediums, because if you get through on the softs, guaranteed the two-stop mediums you can just about pull off a one medium to fresh hard one-stop strategy. Yuki Tsunoda out on track. Let's have a quick look at that. There he is at the moment on his outlap. Great to see him in that lovely livery number 22. Hopefully, he'll be able to get a good quality result today, of course. He is driving in that Alpha Tauri helmet. That's his helmet. A bit weird how the helmets don't sort of change, but great to see him out on track for the team. We're going to do the same here. Soft tyres, it will be as both the Red Bulls head out. Hopefully, we can get out there and put a decent lap in to start qualifying off. Here we go then, Verstappen, 1 minute 27.8. Now, that is a fantastic lap time to kick things off with, but we are coming towards the start of our first flyer this season in season two. Hopefully, it's going to be a good one to start quality off with Yuki Tsunoda already i do believe done his or is doing it right now meanwhile we are getting going with our lap not too shabby into the first corner here probably could have broke a bit later not going too risky off the start i want a good lap in here a decent lap in that we can then build on if necessary but you can see in front the lovely mclarens are going at the moment watch out for norris this season that high focus he could be looking fantastic. Another man to watch out for, of course, Lance Stroll. Will he be not phased at all by his low focus and just get on with it, get some really good results like Pierre Gasly? Or will we see him struggle due to that and maybe not be in this midfield fight as much? Sort of sit further back around about where my teammate will probably be, generally, because his stats aren't that fantastic. But... We're sticking fairly close to this McLaren here. Doesn't feel like too shabby of a lap. I think it might be on an in or out lap. But still, we're actually might be catching them a little bit. So we're going pretty nicely here. It's felt smooth, but also first laps for me around the track in quality can feel smooth, but be actually very slow. And you find that out next lap on the Delta. But this has felt pretty nice. 1 minute 26, 7, 8, 3. And we've gone quicker than Pierre Gasly just off Checo Perez and Lewis Hamilton. Wow. The pace is here in Bahrain for us. As you can see, we steam into the first corner. I'm totally surprised about that. Yuki Tsunoda P6. We're going to return to the pits in a second. Teammate status. They're in sync. Their best lap time is a 1 minute 29.1. 1 minute 29.1. Not fantastic. Not terrible. But what a lap from ourselves there. We're going to get back to the garage here. That lap may be enough to get us comfortably through. I think it actually is enough to get us comfortably through. P5, and that is after everyone but two, Norris and Sainz, have gone. We are P5, even if they go quicker than us, P7, 
1 minute 28 3. We are going to be comfortable. Verstappen, though, in a league of his own here, three tenths quicker than Valtteri Bottas on the first lap. Purple in both sector one and sector two. Norris has gone P3 there, but it's very close up top. Bottas, then Norris just behind, close with Checo Perez, Hamilton. Those guys bunched together were P6. Then Danny Rick, P7. The McLarens looking really solid here. Especially Norris mixing in with the Red Bulls and the Mercs. They've got a decent car this weekend. Pierre Gasly, P8. We are quicker than him, crucially. But crucially for him, he's ahead of both Ferraris. Those two are struggling. Similar lap times, but Sainz and Leclerc are struggling a little bit. Then we get to Pierre Gasly's teammate, Lance Stroll. He certainly hasn't had... It's not a bad lap time, that is it? 1 minute 29 oh. That's not too bad from him there. I was expecting to do more right, actually, to be honest with you. And he has done. Lance Stroll, just ahead of my teammate. It's going to be ourselves versus Gasly, and then Stroll versus Sonoda. That is going to play out really, really well. The gap between those two, just over a tenth. It is looking pretty close. Then we get into the danger zone. About three tenths behind my teammate. Fernando Alonso, P13 for Alpine despite having good results in free practice. And I know he's a, D, he's a really good driver. Got the stats, but doesn't have the car. He probably won't be competing in the midfield fight. Just doesn't have the car. And I think that's the problem with him. Antonio Giovinazzi, slightly better car, slightly less quality driver at the moment in terms of the stats in our career mode. P14 for him. Not too shabby. He'll be happy with that. Seb Vettel certainly won't be happy with P15. I don't think he's going to be competing with other than us and Gasly that much this season. He might fight Sonoda and Stroll a bit, but a disappointing one there for Seb, considering his consistency last season. You wouldn't expect a poor slip-up like that. Esteban Ocon, P16, struggling in that Alpine, a bit like his teammate. Kimi Raikkonen, P17, not too bad, the Finn. Not too shabby, really. Pretty close to Esteban Ocon, but let's not forget Esteban is in a better car. Then again, Kimi is also quite a very old driver. George Russell, P18 there. Not too bad for him. Head of his teammate Nicholas Latifi and the two Hassers. But Robert Schwartzman in that Aston Martin has an absolute mare here. They don't want to be P19. I mean, I know Seb, a very solid driver's P15. But P19 for Robert below the Williams of George Russell, which is way off them in the R&D comparison chart, is really quite disappointing. Latifi, of course, P20. Really solid work from him to ensure he's ahead of Nikita Mazepin and Mick Schumacher. And Mazepin, despite not having the stats and potentially not the quality, actually is quicker than Schumacher at the moment. In terms of those guys need to go again, I would say from Alonso down, need to go out again with Kimi Raikkonen being the drop zone. Actually, it's quite close there, so possibly Sonoda and Stroll will need to go again. Everyone else, though, is certainly looking safe. So are we. We won't need to go out again. We can just sit and relax for the rest of Q1. Well, your Q1 results then. And as you can see, the order jumping around all over the place. Some drivers didn't go again. Drivers who did go again. Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, they have jumped back up the order. Sainz just off for Stappen looking the better of the two. But that's not where to look at the moment. The crucial things are we are through in quality. Along with Yuki, who went again, improved and is out of Q1. Wow, George Russell out of Q1. Really great work from him. Who have we lost? We've lost Antonio Giovinazzi, P17. Not too bad for him in the Alfa Romeo, head of his teammate. Mick Schumacher will be chuffed with that. Just off the back of Antonio Giovinazzi, P18 in an extremely uncompetitive Haas. Fantastic work from the German. Then Kimi Raikkonen, P19 for Alfa Romeo. Not too bad there, his best lap. 1 minute 29, 4, 2, 5. Not, not too bad, I suppose. Still chunk off his teammate. Not the end of the world. Robert Schwartzman, though, P20. That is extremely disappointing. The Aston Martin has got similar pace to our car and the Alpha Tauri. You look at all of those cars, the furthest down is, t is his teammate, Sebastian Vettel. Vettel is P12. He's even behind the Alfa Romeos and the Al Alpines. Both of both those two cars are slower, specifically the Alpines. And that's just really poor for Schwartzman. You're not exactly going to get merry merits for that, Robert. Come on. Get your act together, mate. You really need to. Because I know you're an F2 driver. 
last season. But you've been beating my Mick Schumacher, who was a rookie last season. And he's in a significantly worse car. Then Nicholas Latifi, P21, stays ahead of Nikita Mazepin, who is dead last. Of course, in terms of the order, having a look down it, of course, very, very close in the top eight. You can't really decide that at all. And we're sat right on the back of that with Pierre Gasly on the back of ourselves. Really, when you look at it, the Ferraris have gone again. They put themselves back up there. Verstappen, though, is looking really good. One tenth ahead of Carlos Sainz, who went twice in Q1. That'll cost Ferrari later on, unless it was the same set of tyres, and I think it will have been a different one. Valtteri Bottas, P3 for Mercedes there. Really solid, looking a lot stronger than his teammate Hamilton, who's down in P8. Perez not looking as strong as his teammate, and the McLarens looking pretty fantastic. Sandwich there, P5 and 6. Battle between us and Gasly is looking quite likely. We're close together. Then Sonoda, P11. Very happy with that. Faster than Vettel, faster than Alonso. Alonso, faster than Lance Stroll. Alonso, we should be faster than. He's in a worse car, but Lance Stroll, maybe it got to him a little bit. P14, not as good as the first run. Sits three places behind Sonoda. Not looking as fantastic, is it, for the Canadian there? He's not going to be that happy with that, I don't think. really don't think he'll be that happy with it. Yeah, a bit disappointing for the Canadian there. P14. Hmm. That's re it's really interesting, that. Because, of course, he was close to Snowder. He's dropped down. Is that the low focus? The inconsistency? Lap by lap, that's costing him. Vettel managed to improve solidly. He's out of Q1. And Fernando Alonso. But we've lost. Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Raikkonen, Schwartzman, Latifi and Mazepin from Q1. But me and Yuki continue on to the second part of qualifying here in Bahrain. Well, Q2, of course, no real surprises at the end of Q1 in terms of who we lost. I mean, maybe a little bit of a surprise that Russell got out, but no surprise that we don't have either of the Hassers here, either of the Alphas here, neither do we have George Russell or Robert Schwartzman. Both the Alpines, though, remain. It is, of course, the conundrum of Q2. My teammate Yuki Snowda out on track. He is on the softs. Now, you sit here, there's two choices. You either go for the soft tyres or you go for the medium tyres. Now, if you go for the medium tyres and you mess up, you have to revert for the soft tyres. And if you get through on the soft tyres, then that leaves you for the race. The opportunity to potentially have to use either a warm set of softs or a warm set of mediums. And it gives you that problem. However, if we just go straight on with the softs and accept that we're going to have to do a two-stopper, if we get through, then we'll have two fresh sets of mediums, which should possibly be the optimum strategy for us to use. Sonoda out on track at the moment. Perez and Ricardo out on track. Let's have a look at what tyres they're on. Lewis Hamilton has opted for the softs. Not much confidence there. Neither for Ricardo. Gasly would expect to be on the softs. Perez could have maybe gone for the mediums. Alonso softs. Leclerc on the softs. Right, we're going to pop out on the softs and start off Q2 with hopefully a solid lap. Well, Danny Rick is the first man to top the charts. One minute, 28-1 in the McLaren. That is a decent lap. Hopefully, we can do something maybe a little bit better than Q1, but our Q1 lap definitely was a decent one for me. Checo Perez, 1 minute, 27-9 in there. He has joined the 1 minute, 27 club with his teammate. Max Verstappen. Question is, can the likes of Valtteri Bottas, Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, can they do that too? But of course, this is about us focusing, getting a decent lap in in Q2. Of course, these are the tyres that you'll start the race on if you qualify in the top 10, which is of course the target here, because we're probably going to be looking us and Pierre to get through. You don't want to do too many laps on these tyres, especially because these will be the ones that you're going to use if you get through. And some tracks, low tyre wear, maybe Monaco, feel free to go for two. You know, it's not going to kill you in the race. Bahrain, high-paced racers, three DRS zones, lots of tyre wear and a forced two-stopper. Doesn't sound like one where you want any extra tyre wear. So really, 
you don't want to do too many laps on these if you're going to have to start the race on them. Because, of course, if you're way outside the top ten, then improve, get in the top ten, you've got a bit of a problem there, don't you? You really do. And then you do sort of like think, well, we can go again. But what's the point of you just putting that lap in? But anyway, Bottas joins the 1 minute 27 club. We are going to cross the finish line with a 1 minute 28. And we're slower than our teammate by two tenths. I'm just going to break what I said and go again here for the second time in quali. Sonoda sits in that elusive P10 position. Of course, P9 slightly above it. Those two positions aren't really what we want to try and be getting towards with Pierre Gasly probably trying to join us in those. Our lap time at the moment, not too fantastic. Certainly thought we could have been quicker than Fernando. Maybe it's a good lap from him and Yuki, but we don't have it this lap. Certainly don't have it this lap. And it is costing us... We're going to return to the pits, not to be this lap, actually, no. We're going to return to the pits because this lap is gone. We're going to abandon this one and hopefully be able to go quicker at the end of the session on another fresh set. Well, sadly for ourselves, we couldn't replicate what we managed to do in the first part of qualifying. Really, really frustrating we couldn't replicate that. It was quite a dismal lap, to be honest with you, for ourselves, because we have sat down there in P14. We're going to have to go out pretty soon again for another lap. But as you can see, only two cars behind us. Our teammate, one and a bit tenths quicker than only two, actually. It's a little bit worrying there that we couldn't find that pace, but of course we will be going out again on that fresh set of tyres to try and get out of Q1, or at least towards P11, P12. Valtteri Bottas is currently quickest. He is looking pretty solid. You can see how this order's literally flipped. That'll continue to happen. We have got a right season on our hands here. There's no sort of formation, just any sort of order at the front, but it's Bottas and Perez looking solid up there. Signs looking a lot better than Leclerc this season once again. That's only from quality, though, so we can't really take too much from quality because it's all over the place. Solid from Daniel Ricciardo to be ahead of a struggling Lewis Hamilton a bit there. Verstappen down in P7 isn't looking that great despite a fastest middle sector. Leclerc, P6. Norris, P8, despite the fantastic focus. You know, the order absolutely jumbled round. And by the time you spread it out, in fact, Norris is actually quite a chunk off the pace there when you look at it. Hmm. Five tenths to separate the top seven. Then Norris... Makes it eight tenths for the top eight. So he is quite a chunk behind. Nearly three tenths, actually. So Norris certainly struggling a bit that lap. He'll want to improve to get back to the main pack, led by Valtteri at the moment. Seb Vettel, really fantastic lap in the Aston Martin. The German sits P9 as it stands. Vettel just behind in P10. Then look how close Sonoda is to Gasly. I talked about this, how he's got very similar ratings to Gasly better focus and you can see it there the gap to them is nothing and Sonoda is looking at Q3 looking his lips at that because he is very very close to it Lance Stroll behind there about a tenth with Alonso just behind him we sit P14 just behind Alonso with a lot of work to do George Russell a chunk off Ocon at the back but we have got a lot of work to do here got to get into the 1 minute 28 we need to be getting towards Vettel's 1 minute 28.8s, potentially even 1 minute 28.7s, if we want to get out of quality. We're going to be heading out soon on a fresh set of tyres. Hopefully, we can put something a bit better in than that lap. Maybe another version of our Q1 lap, because even a carbon copy of that might just be enough to get us through. Not entirely sure, but I'm going to go out there and hopefully throw some more cards onto the table in this qualifying session. Well, if you guys did watch Quali at Bahrain from last season, I know that was a long, long time ago, the second ever video on this channel. If you guys did watch that, then you would have seen that we finished P11 at the end of it. P11, very solid position to finish because you get the free tyre choice at the start of the race and aren't constricted to using worn softs. So, the target here is P11 or Q3. And we're heading in the right direction of the start of this lap. I mean, the lap we did in Q2 to try and set a decent time wasn't the best, I have to say. But it wasn't exactly the worst. And that's a little bit worrying 
but we just don't seem to have the pace this weekend, do we? Really, really don't. We're a bit quicker through that section. Really pushing the limits a tad more. Don't want to take the curb on that exit. Got to be aggressive this lap. But of course, when you're aggressive, it increases the chance of a, maybe a lockup or a bit of oversteer. Just teeny little mistakes like that. But we are going a lot quicker here. Four tenths, and that absolutely propels you up the order because it is just so close here in quality. That would be enough to get us up into the top 10, I do believe at the moment. Mediums certainly would never have been a possibility. I'm glad we didn't try that because that would have been wasting tyres. Certainly would have been. Good exit off that corner there. Avoid the gravel trap. And my teammates also out. The two Alpha Tauris heading out again. Lando Norris heading out again. No surprises there after a dismal quality lap. Everyone else stays in. We're going to go six tens quicker here. That is our lap to bring it to the table. And we go P8. A very respectable P8. I'm not going to bother going again here because you don't want to put any extra wear on the tyres. We're going to bring it in and hope that no one goes considerably quicker. But that should be enough for Q3. A solid 1 minute 28, 3, 9, 3. The others were in the 1 minute 28, 8. So we should be safe in quality. Come on, through to Q3 in the first quality session of Season 2. P9, and I'm going to take that. I am going to take that any day. That lap was a tasty one. Everyone got through in the top 10 on the soft, so no real problems there. But as I have said multiple times now, it's going to be ourselves versus P.A. Cassidy this season. We don't need a rivalry, and that continues. P9 and 10, but actually, we were a lot closer to the top 8 there. We really were dipping ourselves towards that top 8, sadly. Yuki out in Q2 couldn't find a solid lap. However, he is ahead of Lance Stroll, which is important. He's ahead of Lance Stroll. That's sort of what we need him to do this season. In terms of the guys we've lost, we've lost Vettel, P11. For him, not too bad there. Only just missed out on Q3. Look at the gap from him to Pierre Gasly. I'm glad we went comfortably quicker there. Fernando Alonso managed P12. Really solid in a pre Dismal Alpine at the moment. He's got to be happy with that, hasn't he? Yuki Tsunoda P13, hoping for a little bit more. But when you look at the gap to Pierre Gasly and you say it's under a tenth, it, I'm quite proud of him there. A good start to the season for Yuki. Lance Stroll, P14 for Alpha Tauri. A bit, bit further back there. Not too much at all, though. Pretty solid for him considering his focus on his debut. But thankfully, Yuki has beaten him. George Russell, P15 for Williams there ahead of Esteban Ocon. A bit surprising to see that, but Russell, Mr. Saturday, performing again. Esteban Ocon. Let's not forget Esteban. He's just really, really last season, he was there. And I think that summed up his season. He was there. He never really managed to contribute that much. No points for the team. And he's just just not really done that fantastically. He's beaten by quite a slower car than in the like Williams, of course, George Russell. And he's quite a chunk off his teammate. It's nearly six tens there. So a bit disappointing for him in terms of looking at the top ten. I can't call it. I can't call pole. I certainly would put it down to a Mercedes or a Red Bull, but there's still a chance for a Ferrari and McLaren to get in there. I mean, you look, Valtteri Bottas, quickest in this session, turning his fortunes around a bit. Looking pretty quick, as you'd expect. Perez is up there, Peter, only a tenth off. Signs up there, P3, two tenths off. Ricardo, P4. Norris is up there in P5. He's looking solid after improving. Lando Norris, really, when we look at him, he's got that focus this season. Whether he can outperform Charles Leclerc, that's going to be the battle. I thought coming into this season, it would be Danny Rick versus Carlos Sainz. And then separately, Norris versus Leclerc. But no, it's anyone's game here. It really is anyone's game. Focus not really playing too much at the moment. All these guys extremely focused. We often see that causes lots of change in career mode. If you've got a good focus, it means an awful lot. But that doesn't matter here because they're so high. Of course, Lewis Hamilton, P6, still comfortably off his teammate. That's continuing. Leclerc, P7, comfortably off his teammate. Signs. Looking a bit more dominant in quality so far. And then Verstappen, after a fantastic Q1, decides to take a bit of a back seat and cool down for Q3. 
three. Pierre Gasly also through. I think it'll be ourselves versus Pierre for P9. Hopefully, maybe we could climb a bit further up the order because I can see the threat of the one stop from the likes of Vettel, Alonso and Sonoda is going to be very strong in the race and it's going to make it very difficult for us to score points. We've got a lot of work to do in Q3, but in Q2, we have lost Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso, our teammate Yuki Sonoda, Lance Stroll, George Russell and Esteban Ocon. But now it's time for Q3 at Bahrain. Big boys time then. Q3 it certainly is. Six different teams, ten different drivers and really it could be dished out to any one of those eight drivers. That is of course pole, not lunch or a little bit of bag of crisps. Crisps maybe. Probably going to go to the Red Bulls, Mercedes, one of those two. But, and I say but here, because the McLarens, the Ferraris, they could get into the mix. It really is eight teams in it here. Yes, the Red Bulls and the Mercedes have more pace in general because of their cars. But don't rule out Lando. Don't rule out Danny Rick. Don't rule out Carlos and Charles. But, of course, being in Q3, having already used three sets of tyres, means that we're going to have to use a one set of softs here in Bahrain that we used in Q1, which means we'll be a little bit slower in this first lap, of course, for the second lap. We'll be able to use a fresh set of tyres and hopefully set something decent. But as Norris, Verstappen, Sainz and Hamilton are heading out, we are going to go out on a new set of tyres, get a bit of a feel for Q3, then we can go big. Well, Max Verstappen, 1 minute 27, 9. Norris went about 3 tenths slower. I think Verstappen might be able to go a little bit a little bit quicker than that. I wouldn't rule out maybe Bottas putting in something decent like that. Checo maybe. Not sure about Hamilton. He's been a bit on and off so far this race weekend. Not sure if he's quite got the pace here in Q3 for a very decent lap. We're going to try and push it this lap and go for something decent on these warm softs then we get a fresh set where if we can put a decent lap in on these warm softs it will take the pressure off a little bit for the fresh set and maybe allow us to relax and put something in really really decent in quality Charles Leclerc the slowest of those who have gone and we're looking pretty competitive in sector one compared to him Perez 1 minute 27 8 Leclerc's gone slower than his teammate and Danny Rick but let's not forget, we still have the all-important final runs left here in Quali. We've messed up turn 10 a bit this lap. Gasly, gone quicker than signs, Ricardo and Leclerc. Not sure if that'll stick by the end of the session. But a fantastic lap from Pierre Gasly. 1 minute 6, 5, 2, 9 by the end of sector 2. We're coming up to that now. And we are 6 tenths off Pierre Gasly by the end of sector 2. That is due to the mistake at turn 10. It is going to be a final lap. Then we return to the garage. Then fresh set of tyres. Then we go again. And then, hopefully, a decent quality result. But we've got a lot of catching to do to Pierre. If he's all the way up there in P6, we are a lot slower, as you'd expect on worn tyres. OK, Sector 1, but it just unravelled a bit in Sector 2 and Sector 3. We're going to bring it into the pits this lap to then get a fresh set of tyres to go again. Well, a very, very quick update here. Of course, we are quite a chunk off the pace back there. We need to be going out very quickly, though, so we can maybe get a couple of laps in on a fresh set of tyres. Perez is quicker than Verstappen, then Hamilton up there, not too bad at the start of this one. Norris separating the two McLarens with Bottas there in P. Five. Pierre Gasly leaves Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo. Then Charles Leclerc, two tenths off that. He's struggling. He'll be looking to improve. But this can all flip over. We know how quick some of these drivers can go. And I don't think 1 minute 27.8 is the limit. There's plenty more to play for. And we're on a fresh set of softs. We're going to head out now for our final couple of laps. Well, we're actually not the first man out on track here on our fresh set in front. We've got Bottas and then, of course, a McLaren. You can see the field pretty nicely spread out. We won't have any problems with that. But certainly plenty of improvement for some drivers. Likes of Leclerc, Ricardo. Bit of signs there. Needs to improve. 
I think Verstappen can certainly improve. We saw really good laps from him in Q1. Really, really quick, good, decent laps. We're a bit messy out of the first section here. We've got two laps to get it right, though, so no need to panic if we get it wrong on the first lap. That will be somewhere to put a plaster on it when we go for the second lap in sector one. Not as quick through this lap, but of course we are now starting to gain pace where we messed up last lap, of course. The lap on one tyres, we're fine in sector one. Messi in sector two, we lost time down here. We're going to get a much better acceleration off and that's where we lost the time in sector two. That's why we were six tenths off. It's pretty easy to lose time at turn 10. We did that last lap. We're not going to do it again. We're going to carry more pace up through here. This is a more competitive lap time. This could be something. Hopefully, it's enough to get us into that mix. We're going quicker than Gasly's previous lap, but he could go quicker himself. 30 seconds left in the session means that we will get over the line to go again if we can actually manage to go a little bit quicker here off the final corner. And that is Ricardo improving. Bottas goes quickest. We go seventh. Absolute madness. Leclerc then takes seventh from us. We've got to focus a little bit here. Can the Red Bulls respond to the Finns statement here? Can they go quicker? Sainz goes quicker than us. Gasly now sits P10. Quali complete. He's crossed the line. Final say. Max Verstappen snatches pole in the dying moments here. Wow. What an end to quali. It's not over yet for ourselves. We're, of course, still on a flyer. Sector one, pretty much identical to last lap there. Now, we've just got to make it count. If we go a little bit quicker, maybe we can get a Ferrari. Maybe. That's the target, of course. It certainly isn't out of reach. But it's just going to take a nice, clean finish to this lap. Sector one, again, a little bit shaky. Easy for that to happen. Easy for the tension to get to you, along with the excitement of what's happening around everyone else. Can we hold it flat through here? Yes, we can. And now the push off the exits. We really are aggressive off the exit, and that's going to get us a tenth, maybe a tenth and a half now by the end of the straight. If we hook this up, we could go quicker than a Ferrari or two. Let's see, it's going to be two tenths, two and a half tenths. Three tenths, over the line we go. Well, 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 about the maybe we can get a Ferrari, cleaning up sector three, and we have gone P5 in qualifying. Wow, we have really, really turned that Q3 on its head there, ahead of both McLarens and Ferraris. A bit of two by two at the end, in between ourselves and Gasly. But Max Verstappen on pole, with a lap I was not expecting. I thought we could go 1 minute 27 fives, maybe 1 minute 27 fours, but a 1 minute 27 1 from the Dutchman. Look at that. Simply fantastic, beautiful lap from Max Verstappen. 3.8 tenths quicker than Valtteri Bottas, who sits P2. That is incredible. Really is incredible. The dominance there. Bottas to Hamilton, about a tenth. That's two, second to fourth. First, off in the distance. Four tenths. Four times that gap. Verstappen, maybe this is his season. Last season was disappointing for him, P4. Is he going to try and switch that whole thing on its head and go for the championship this season? Because, I mean, this is, this is definitely the way you start. A championship fight. Valtteri Bottas, P2 though. Continuing solid results from last season. The Finn will be quite happy with that, I have to say. It's not too shabby of a lap at all, really, is it, P2? Certainly take that. 1 minute 27.5. That's what I was expecting the fastest lap to be. And he had that until Verstappen crossed the line in the dying moments of the session ending. Of course, then we got over the line quick enough to go again. But solid result from Valtteri Bottas, once again ahead of his teammate, also ahead of Checo Perez. There, Perez sits P3 in the Red Bull, the Mexican. Not too bad there. Last season, of course, finished, I do believe it was P2 
in the drivers after a terrible start, really. First half of the calendar didn't go well for him. Second half of the calendar went fantastically. Last three races, two wins in a second. He's continuing that now into this season, and this is going to make a spicy title fight. Hamilton sits P4 once again. We saw him P4 quite a lot last season, but managed to get P3 in Mexico with a Verstappen mechanical failure. We, though, are P5. Now you can see the R&D gap. You didn't see it in Q1 and Q2, but the gap from Mercedes and Red Bull to McLaren and Ferrari is about four or five tenths. Ourselves, though, have just slotted in front of the McLarens. You know, look at that lap. Over a tenth quicker than them, just about that. And we sit P5. That's perfect position for the race because we shouldn't be at threat for any of those guys on the one stop. And we can directly fight with the McLarens and the Ferraris way ahead of Pierre Gasly. It is looking like a very tasty race tomorrow in terms of looking at the grid now. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a decent result. Everyone on the softs in the top 10. It's all a fair playing field there. I don't think we'll go forwards. However, I'd certainly be happy if we finish P5 at the flag here at Bahrain. Lando Norris, though, P6 ahead of this group. He had a bit of a disappointing start to last season, of course, especially at Bahrain. That was because of us. Starting next to each other today, well, tomorrow's race, finishing next to each other today. Three Brits, actually, in a row. Hopefully, though, we don't end up having another mayor with Lando Norris. But he is ahead of his teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. Signs just behind there. Ahead of his teammate, Charles Leclerc. Those four, nothing to separate them. It's going to come down to the race. Leclerc could finish ahead of that group. Sainz could. Norris could remain there. Ricardo could. Any of those four wouldn't rule him out with Pierre Gasly. Two tenths off the back. To be four tenths, or well, slightly under, four tenths though, quicker than Pierre Gasly. That's really incredible for us. We've got the car for this season, and I am not joking about that. We have got that car. And although it's pretty similar to where it was last season, we sort of ruled Alpine out the equation, we can really, really fight this season. We really can. Hopefully, Sonoda can come forward in the race tomorrow. Now, that would be fantastic there. But the Red Bulls and the Mercedes, Verstappen is in a league of his own. Then, Bottas versus Perez versus Hamilton. That will be an exciting battle tomorrow. And then watch out for Norris versus Ricciardo versus Sainz Leclerc. And don't forget, we'll, of course, probably be falling back into that one. When I don't have the tunnel vision, I really do struggle. And if those guys at the front are so much quicker, we could end up backing everyone up a bit, which isn't what we want to do when there's guys on the one stop, P11, P12. And then, of course, Pierre Gasly, P10. He'll be looking to get into the mix of the Ferraris and the McLarens. We're looking pretty comfortable, though, ahead of him at the start of this season. But Verstappen, dominant on pole, painting a very nice race under the floodlights don't forget we will start lights out we'll be under the floodlights and we'll finish the season under the floodlights at Jeddah it's certainly going to be it's going to be a thrilling season can't stress it anymore it really will so you don't want to miss a video and by not missing missing a video you want to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel don't forget also to turn notifications on if you want to be notified when I've said another video, because I'm telling you, the race video is going to be well worth watching. Of course, ourselves going from P5, hopefully we can make that stick. We're even in the 1 minute 27s. Now, actually, I've just realised that 1 minute 27, 998, by 2000s, we're in the 1 minute 27s. Ah, oh, man, I'm absolutely chuffed with that. I thought we'd be stuck in the high 1 minute 28s. Maybe getting to 1 minute 25, but 1 minute 27, 998 is our lap time to finish. Verstappen on pole from Bottas, Perez, Hamilton, ourselves, Norris, Ricardo, Sainz, Leclerc, Gasly. That's your final rundown of the grid. But we will start P5. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you all sometime soon.